Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Additional details have now come out in the two major investigations against Israeli government officials Arya Deri and David Keyes. Keyes, who serves as Prime Minister Netanyahu's foreign media spokesman, will now be resigning from his post, according to Channel 2 News, following sexual misconduct accusations made in September by at least 10 different women. Keyes continues to deny any wrongdoing in the allegations, which go back years before he was appointed, but he still agreed to resign from his media position in return for the Civil Service Commission's closing of the investigation against him. As for Interior Minister Arya Deri, the Shas party leader and coalition member was recommended for indictments by police this week on charges of fraud, breach of trust, obstruction of court proceedings, making false statements to the Speaker of the Knesset, money laundering, and tax offenses regarding the withholding of nearly two million shekels from tax authorities. The police say their evidence shows criminal actions in land purchases and sales, in dealings with businessman Ilan Sharabi, and even with tampering evidence, among other things. And the allegations span a wide range of time, including both before and after his appointment to the Interior Ministry. In fact, in order to complete investigations into more recent suspicions, police have split the charges into two different investigations, one which is now ongoing. Now, if indicted and found guilty, this would be the second time that Derry will have been convicted of corruption as Interior Minister. Derry first went to prison in 2000 for 22 months after being convicted of taking bribes while serving as Interior Minister in the 1990s. And after his release, it was almost a decade before he returned to politics, where he was then reappointed as interior minister by Prime Minister Netanyahu. Despite years of efforts and months working closely with the United States Justice Department, the Justice Department has this week refused the formal request of Prime Minister Netanyahu to allow Jonathan Pollard to serve the rest of his parole sentence in Israel. According to the report, the department cited Pollard's poor health and the severity of his crimes as reasoning. Pollard, who served 30 years in prison convicted of espionage, was released to his New York home in 2015, where he now lives under heavy regulation. Among the five-year-long parole conditions is a 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. curfew where he must be home, he must wear a GPS ankle monitor at all times, and he cannot leave New York State. Additionally, he must remain in the United States until at least 2020 unless he gets permission from the president. But since long before his release, the Israeli Prime Minister has been trying to secure his return. Pollard was originally given Israeli citizenship in 1995, and Netanyahu's office reiterated that despite this latest failure, the Prime Minister is committed to bringing Pollard to Israel and will continue to work towards that goal. In other news, passengers from last Thursday's hellish El Al Flight 002 are now demanding monetary compensation from the airline, along with an apology claiming El Al lied to them, causing monetary damages and distress. Last Thursday, Flight 002 from New York to Tel Aviv was severely delayed due to a series of unfortunate events, causing major upset to religious passengers and the flight staff alike. Attorneys Tamar Falk and Amit Haddad, who represent the 180 religious plaintiffs, have already sent a letter to El Al, though, demanding a public statement that none of the passengers had been violent, as El Al previously claimed, and that the company promised to return the passengers money in addition to damages amounting to 50,000 shekels per person. After Flight 002 was severely delayed by tardy flight crew and poor planning, religious passengers requested that they be allowed to deplane so as not to violate the Sabbath. To calm the passengers down, the pilot announced he would indeed go back to the gate, but then he took off, eventually landing in Athens in order to touch down as soon as possible. El Al explained initially that the issues arose when, quote, a group of Haredim requested to get off the plane and exercised heavy and violent pressure against the cabin crew, end quote, in seeking to disembark. But several videos posted later have surfaced and none demonstrated any violence from the passengers, only loud arguments with the cabin crew. The pilot on the flight then later claimed that a rabbi on board allowed the takeoff, but other passengers have since denied both the pilot's claim and the rabbi in question's authority. Just a day before his 89th birthday, Holocaust survivor and Olympian Sir Ben Helfgott was knighted at Buckingham Palace by Prince Charles. The former champion weightlifter and Holocaust education advocate was rewarded for his lifelong, quote, determination, dedication, and unparalleled perseverance, end quote, in services to Holocaust remembrance and education. And Karen Pollack, the chief executive of the Holocaust Educational Trust, said that this honor was marvelous news and so deserved. She said Ben, quote, helped shape Holocaust education in the UK and campaigned both for a memorial in London and for a national day to remember the Holocaust, end quote, among other things. After surviving three different Nazi death camps, Buchenwald, Schlieben, and Theresienstadt, Sir Ben dedicated the rest of his life to making sure that his suffering would not be repeated. In addition to helping establish the National Holocaust Memorial Day, he was a member in the Prime Minister's Holocaust Commission, and he also spent over 50 years serving as chairman of the 45 Aid Society for Holocaust Survivors, eventually also serving as its president. And despite his age and accomplishments, it sounds like he won't ever stop. 
He's previously said that he's worked all his life to, quote, educate about the Holocaust and will continue to do so, end quote. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.